I met David Cronenberg in Toronto, uh, I think it was 1980. It was the year of bad timing uh, at the Toronto Film Festival. And the film, Bad Timing, has won the Audience Award. And uh, there was a celebration in a bar downtown. I can't remember what bar, but I remember Red Stripe and sitting next to David Cronenberg in the bar and um, talking about movies and I, I knew his films well and um, there was a moment in the conversation being a film producer uh, I said is there anything you really uh, would like to make and he said well you know I've got this crazy idea I'd like to make Naked Lunch and that was like a flash of, of lightning in a way because suddenly I wow you are the only director who could adapt Naked Lunch and uh, I started on my uh, my trails to get the rights uh, of the book from uh, William Burroughs and uh, that was an exciting journey to, to Lawrence, Kansas and um, he was very keen for Cronenberg to make a film of the book and um, that was the beginning of the project. Good. I'm looking for James. Has anybody seen James Ballard? You know who I mean, the producer of this epic? David Cronenberg's films are unique, and so it's very hard to be a cinema fan and not be aware of his films. And I'd seen all the films that had been available in England at the time. And um, his films had made such an impact in the way the style of them and the combination of um, effects, floor effects, and his own special way of thinking of things that um, when he mentioned Naked Lunch, it was immediately apparent what sort of film he could make. Working on Naked Lunch was quite unusual because it started in Tangier. After David had written the screenplay, we went to Tangier with William Burroughs and uh, walked the streets of Tangier uh, with David, um, James Grauholtz, William Burroughs and Hercules Belva, my colleague, and we stayed at the Minza Hotel, which Burroughs was very happy at, and talked about the movie, and technicians arrived to prepare the movie, and then the Gulf War happened, and the insurance company said, we, won't, we can't insure the film in Morocco, and the film was off, and we'd spent quite a lot of money, and then David rang from Toronto and said, I've been thinking about it, I can shoot it all in Toronto and we'll recreate um, Tangier and the Interzone, which was after all the Interzone, which was a place that was placed in Tangier in, 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 um, in Toronto. And in doing that, we reduced the budget, didn't have to go to Morocco. So that was um, something which is significant in the production and probably significant in the way it looks. Good horror movies are good movies, so I'm not a particular genre specific. My film taste is much more, much broader than that. And I just saw David Cronenberg as a unique filmmaker. And yes, there's some scenes in Naked Lunch which equate to Burroughs's ideas and thoughts, mixed with Cronenberg's ideas and thoughts. And The Crash is a sort of cautionary horror movie and um, Dangerous Method is completely different. So I don't think, I mean, I don't, in my own idea, they aren't horror movies. They're just good movies with some frightening moments in them, but they're not trying to, to uh, put themselves as horror films. This is my new project. Crash is a book which is um, a favourite. I was a big fan of J.G. Ballard's. And then during the making of Naked Lunch, uh, David said, um, how about Crash? And uh, again, it was a text that I knew. And I thought, David can do this. It's a, again a book that's very difficult to, to adapt, unfilmable in some people's minds. But David adapted it in his way, being completely true to the book. And uh, J.G. Ballard, um, like William Burroughs, 
he was very, very happy with the adaptation of his book because you can't film a book exactly. You have to take the spirit of a book and adapt it, especially works like that. And uh, David did that you know, in a very, very good way. And the film still, Crash, is still very strong and um, has a sort of significance uh, as, um, you know, J.G. Ballard, David Cronenberg. It's a very special combination. So here you are at the nerve center. Yvonne makes everything look like a crime, doesn't he? J.G. Ballard is a favorite author of mine and has been a favorite author and his short stories and his, film, and his criticism of, of, of all ideas. He was a prophet. He was very, um, very accurate in his ideas about what was to be become with humanity. And uh, Crash is a cautionary tale about um, cars and sexuality. And it's a, a very um, Ballardian, which is a word I think you can call, I mean, it's Cronenbergian, and there's Ballardian. And Ballard's um, books have become um, recognized as being from one of our most important novelists. I've already also adapted High Rise, but this isn't about that, but I mean, Ballard is, who was such an extraordinary man himself, who was a modest man like David in terms of their, and their, their presentation of, as people, but then their interior was full of imagination, strong imagination, and uh, J.G. Bellow's imagination and David's imagination were again very, very, very um, uh, harmonious, in, in harmonious in their disharmony with life and what they thought was going on. It's something. We are all intimately involved in the reshaping of the human body by modern technology. When you're thinking of producing a film, you think about all the, um, all, all the ideas in the film and what the film's about and who's going to make that film. And I was lucky in both times. There were texts that I knew and um, David Cronenberg the filmmaking I knew and understood, so I could project, um, obviously not exactly, but I could project what the film might be and how much it could, how much it could be, um, how much it could be stimulating um, from, stimulated from, from the original book into an incredible movie. And uh, that was, that's a joy, one of the enjoyments and the joy of thinking about of turning a, a novel into a movie. I think the test was about a nine or ten week schedule and the film was all shot in Toronto and around Toronto. Um, it didn't try and look like uh, the UK or the M4. It was uh, adapted for Toronto and shot, shot on the, the roads around Toronto and in the studio. David is very precise in terms of the way he shoots and the time he gives. And he gives plenty of time to the actors around the film to let them know what their character is. Like many of the directors, really good directors, they want the actors to deliver their, what they can deliver. And he gives a full space for that. He's not issuing instructions as a sort of traditional type of director. He sets up the situation and informs the actors perfectly and then lets the actors act. And that's a, the best way to get a certain performance. And he knows in his, where he places his camera and what he's thought about the shot and where he's going to have the music. Like uh, all great directors, they already have an idea of what that's to be. Is there something here that interests you? 
this interest me? Crash uh, caused a, a, a big stir at Cannes when it was, um, was screened, and the jury, although they gave it a prize, the, the chairman of the jury abstained from voting. And um, the leading critic of the day, Alexander Walker, who was in the press conference, created an incredible stir and um, shouting at the stage at how horrific the whole affair was. Uh, there was a big movement, particularly in the UK, to have the film banned. And the film was banned in central London. I mean, it was shown in Channel 4, uncut, but it was still banned. It's still banned in the West End. And the councillor, amusingly, um, who banned the film, who hadn't seen the film, he licensed hot dog stalls as well. So he, was, he had a very broad area of, of responsibility, but he banned this film, which caused its success probably in the UK because um, there was a campaign against the film from the Daily Mail and Evening Standard and other newspapers to have the film banned uh, all over the UK, but it had got a certificate. So it was um, it just got a regular certificate with no cuts. But it was um, used as an example, I think it was run up to an election or something like that. It was quite cynical. <laughs> Strangely enough, uh, it was the words in the film that um, upset people. And um, uh, it was the sort of continua continuation of uh, stopping thought. Um, it upset people um, more than I thought. Uh, upset, but it's also was something was easy to take and write about, and um, and take a position on. Um, so it was a storm in a teacup, in fact. But even the people you wouldn't expect to use it in a negative way. Surprisingly few of the people, when I met them later on, had ever even seen the film. So uh, the, 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 the people who banned the film, and the, not the critics, but other people who used it as an example on chat shows and news programs, um, they hadn't seen the film. So that was um, also interesting in this sort of maelstrom at the time. But it was a sort of self-feeding, it was a sort of feeding frenzy for a few weeks. Scenes in films like that are a lot of impression. There's a lot of impressionistic things happening. And also when scenes, when there's any scenes like that, which are shot on movies, often there's a very close set. So I, you know, I don't, I don't watch all the filming and um, certainly a, a scene like that, which on film appears to be so strong, uh, if you look at it in, very, in the cold light of shooting it, without any effects or any music. It's something completely different, so it's very hard to, it's hard to, to judge that. Body horror, well, it's body horror is one of the um, weapons of film, and um, that is a, a, people have laid that term on David, because he liked playing um, and working with f effects to trick you, but body, body horror has been with us from the beginning of film. And if you think of films by great filmmakers, like Slicing an Eyeball and um, Todd Browning, Freaks, etc., they're films that um, it's part of cinema. And um, I think it's a term that people have laid on David. And um, when people say, oh, how can David Crane, why is Dangerous Method? or M. Butterfly, or others of his films like that and not like that. They're laying, people, other people are um, trapping uh, somebody to stay in the same place when they're trying to work. So um, the body horror, the films do have um, bodies in a strange way like many, uh, many other artists portray them in paintings, Francis Bacon, or other, other painters. Who, who can do it? David does it in a film, a cinematic way. Well, I suppose cerebral. Cerebral is thoughtful, and David Cronenberg's work is thoughtful. Yeah. So um, it's a badge of honor to have. A, the, the, it's a, it's a, it could be uh, thought of as a badge of honor that somebody 
but they are cerebral in terms of that they are about something profound and interesting uh, and using art as a way of expressing um, those ideas. David is a very brave director who's prepared to give us these special images which he thought up and that's, um, that's very generous. I think you're making it too clean. Medical tattoos are supposed to be clean. This is not a medical tattoo. This is a prophetic tattoo. And prophecies ragged and dirty. Mm. So, make it ragged and dirty. Mm.